Please but I just want to know if you guys have any. Remember, he's on the clock. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead and present your, your, uh, what you want to present to the council, and then uh, I'll turn it over to the council for questions for either yes. management representatives or yourself or your attorney. Please, Mr. Schmidt, do you have anything else? Yes, I Please. do. Yes, I do. We, have, we also have a PowerPoint presentation. Dan, are you going to do the clicking? And I'll just walk us through this. Um, again, my name is Louis Schmidt, the president of Amazon Local 2384. Uh, we, we bargain and negotiate for approximately almost 1,900 uh, Unit 2 employees. Excuse me? Thank you, Diane Barker. And um, so anyways, promises kept, promises made. The story continues, the saga continues. If we look through this, you know, four years ago, 2010, you know, we were in a $277 million shortfall. Everybody came forward to help the city. That's when police, fire, all the city employees came together, all the bargain units came together to help the city out through that deficit. We um, combined everybody, combined over 3.2% uh, reduction in compensation and wages, and after that, we saved over a hundred something million, in, um, you know, to to help the city benefit, uh, reduce that uh, deficit. Along that, that's when the council imposed the the temporary food tax, and this is real small to see, but again, the the food tax goes to highlight what areas of the of the city this was going. The majority of this is for public safety, some libraries, some community centers. And this is what the council voted on because they valued community centers, they valued the, the work that our, the, the public safety does, both you know, the fire and police. And this was, this was what was um, impact, you know, this was the food tax helped to um, restore those services. Um, we can go to the next slide, please. Okay, so in 2012, you guys stated the, the food tax was working to help the community restore services and maintain a high approval rating from our citizens. So when we gave the 3.2 the concession in 2010, all the bargaining units, all the, these employees, dedicated city employees, wearing a badge or not wearing a badge, they were told in two years from now, we'll, we'll, we're going to restore. The city's going to restore. And all these employees ratified the contract. They didn't like those contracts, but they ratified them because they took the city council's word. They took the mayor, I mean, the, the city manager's word, Cavazos. When, 20, when we negotiated in 2012, only we, uh, we, those concessions did not come back. And all those employees, all the, the officers, firefighters, everybody felt just, you know, they were, you know, we were lied to, misled by the city. So, after, we've been here for over 42 years negotiating with the city, you know, working with the city, working with our community. Um, <clears throat> the norm, because we have the slowest government over 40 years, we keep doing more with less, more with less. You keep hearing about we have 500 officers down. Back in 2008, 2010, we had over 2,300 people in our, in our units. Now we're down to just under 1,900. There's, the city keeps cutting and cutting, but again, there's, this is not resolving, you know, what's not, we can't keep cutting our way to a, a, um, a positive budget. So in 2012, in our last year, 1.6 was restored to all the, to everybody. <clears throat> And this, you know, last, so 2013, this Phoenix was exploring options to reduce the 2% food tax. Again, there was a one minute, Mr. Cavazos tells us that we can't do it, we're gonna have to keep sacrificing. And then, miraculously, less than 30 days later, he comes back to the council and says that um, we can do it now. I don't know how that happened. Um, any city employee who either fabricates or, you know, um, gives false information, you know, false data, they get suspended. They're very, it's, you know, we're treated, you know, we're disciplined for if we falsify records. So what happened is the someone produced a budget last year to tell you guys we could cut this. Someone, you know, whether it's the budget director or the finance director, someone pr produced a budget, and that budget, you know, prediction that where you guys were given to reduce this food tax is impacting the citizens of this this great city that we live in, and it's impacting our fire, police officers, every city employee gets impacted because someone made a careless decision. Mr. Waring, I finally agree with you. This projecting number uh, seven percent was really un unreasonable, and we have to hold each other accountable. I mean, you know, that's not right to, you know, come today and tell these employees that we have to continue sacrifices because someone made a erroneous decision to bolster their and maybe I'm wrapping it up to bolster their um, resume, and of course he's no longer here. So now we're to 2014. <clears throat> We got, everybody got a water bill this in January saying the city was looking great, we were doing great, the finances were strong, half of the food stacks were eliminated, and once again, the, city, the citizens were 93% approval rating. And there's the tax, the water bill that everybody got, you know, the, the insert. And, this, and then miraculously, the week after we got this is when we were told that we were in a deficit. And that's just disheartening to all the employees and all to the bargaining units and to the community. Next slide, please. Are you just so, about wrapping up here? 
Uh, yes, Mayor. Again, we, we do have more issues than any bargaining unit, so just, you know, please work with us on this. Thank you, Mayor. Um, again, then we were told we have $39 million, uh, def $39 million deficit. Next slide. You know, you heard Cindy, Biz um, Biz <laughs> you heard the Labor Relations Administrator sta state that they came with an equitable package. I don't understand what equitable was when you're ha having the employees to give up more and more and more. Um, this is not a solution. What we need is we need a solution from the city council and from, from the city itself, but we don't feel that there's been given that direction. It's easy to take from the, the hardworking people, the hardworking, uh, the, the men and women who put their life on the line every day, whether you're wearing a, a badge or you're wearing or not. Everybody sacrifices for the city. And there was no, how, how was that an equitable package, Mayor? It was not an equitable package. And so she's right. We did not come to an agreement with the city. We have not come to an agreement. Next slide, please. So the city is asking for 2.5 from all the bargaining units, but let me uh, highlight to the public that this is an additional to the 1.6 that we're, we're currently behind. So now that equals a total of 4.1 over two years. Um, we did, you know, last Friday I did provide the, the city manager uh, a different proposal. Do I like it? No, I don't. Do my members like it? No, they don't. But we understand the direction. We've spoken to many of you on the members on the council, and thank you for taking the time to speak with us. But we need solutions. It's, it's very easy to point at, at these employees and demonize them. But we are the employees that provide the service to the city. And uh, like I said, I proposed a, a against, against our members' wishes. We, we, th you. They spoke up, Mayor, I'm wrapping it up. And we, we gave the city manager a proposal on Friday that would meet you know, his crit you know, criteria to preserve services, to save the Pioneer Pool in your district, the, the, the many services that go to benefit the community. And um, again, the doom and gloom is just when, uh, that's what's been told to the public, you know, em employee morale is at an all time low. Um, at the end of the day, it's easy for someone to say, oh, we can just freeze this or freeze that. But why are you gonna tell an officer who's just coming off the street that he should somehow make less than the, the bullet's gonna, still gonna hit anybody. It doesn't look on how much you make. You know, when we tell these employees, we, you're trying to tell them the employees to come to the city and prosper, but this freezing does not, that's not the solution. So um, I'll be happy to answer questions thank on you, the- Thank you very much uh, for uh, taking the time. And uh, this is the, uh, you know, I guess in Phoenix history, this is the first time we've gotten to a hearing of this nature. Uh, and so I, I thought 10 minutes was enough, but, but I wanna make sure that we take the time to get it all out there. So that way, when we make this very important decision, likely um, uh, next week, all the information is on the table. So now I'm gonna, turn to members of the uh, council for questions they may have for representative of city management, uh, President Schmidt or his, um, uh, his representatives. Is it, I don't wanna mischaracterize your position, is your position that the position statement that was provided to the fact finder is the official position of the unit two, but that you would, that you would settle, if you will, for what you put on the screen most recently? We gave a, the city manager a proposal on Friday that yeah, he, okay. he rejected. Uh, questions or comments from members of the council? Council Williams, please. Uh, I guess my question is for legal. Um, the lawyer challenged the constitutionality of uh, the interpretation. Could you give your point, of your view, on whether um, the release time and the sick leave and the, uh, I think it was just sick leave, I think he mentioned too, wasn't it? Mayor, Councilwoman Williams, um, we've advised uh, this council that uh, the court order in Cheatham applies to the city. And so, yes, we are very uh, comfortable with the prior advice that we've furnished this council, both with regard to the Cheatham decision, with regard to the local 493 decision, as well as um, we have outside counsel on the fields decision. And so, yes, our legal analysis is sound. Council Williams, any follow-up questions at this time? Okay, and obviously we do uh, more as uh, there'll be plenty of testimony. And just Mayor, could you please, he didn't answer the second question, which was about the, the pensionability issues. I didn't hear him answer that. On the pensionability on the sick leave. Uh, Mayor, Councilwoman Williams, uh, we on the pensionability of sick leave, that has been handled by outside council and in the patrolling matter that's subject to pending litigation. So it, I can't discuss that in open session. We will be happy to discuss that in uh, e-session, but with regard to the specific legal issues in Pacholi, we, we can't discuss that in open session. I would say that the city's position that was presented to the fact finder and to the union was vetted through the law department, and we are very comfortable that the position we presented is on sound legal ground. 
in all cases. All right, Councilman DeCee says you have a question? Uh, just a couple, and to Mr. Schmidt, though, too. Just a uh, point of clarification. When you're looking at things, one, if you're looking at the days off, uh, which the, the court ruling dealt with, and I think that if the public knew how many days off are in these contracts, they would be, they would consider that a gift. Um, if you're looking at the least amount of days off is 41 days off up to at least 51 days. Those are the least amount of days off an employee gets at the city of Phoenix. It goes up from there. Then if you look at pension spiking, which was one of the issues that came up, uh, pension spiking is still in these contracts, regardless of what you know, people are trying to lead you on to. And we even heard staff say, you're going to see uh, savings sometime in the future. There's still no idea what those savings are going to be. They're minimal at best. We've asked for a report on what they are. We don't even know what those are going to be. I mean, get, you know, uniform allowances and things like that. That just really doesn't have an impact on pension spiking. But um, so pension spiking is in these contracts, even though the public was promised it was not going to be in there. The other, uh, when you look at the, um, the budget analysis that occurred last year, that was a 7% uh, revenue projection that was in there. A lot of, there were three of us on the council that voted against that budget for a variety of reasons. One of them was that, at least on my end, I didn't believe it was real, and it's proven not to be real. But that 7% uh, budget projection got you your 1.6 restoration. Now remember that, the, the phony budget got you the extra money that helped create the crisis today. Did you say you had a question, Councilman? Pardon? Did you say you had a question? Have, no, well, I'm just pointing out. Oh, no, I thought you had a question. No, no, you can no. respond back. No, you I just do. And I, I have I'm no problem for a question. with that. President Schmidt, I was, was going to do is uh, have Councilman DeCee, so I thought it was going to be a question, but if he's going to make yeah. comments, which is perfectly within his prerogative, but I was going to give you the opportunity to respond afterwards. Councilman yeah, DeCee. and the other thing, too, just as a, you probably find it interesting, but the slogan that you put up there, promises made, promises kept, that was my slogan. Your campaign slogan, and the Thank signs you. were up early before the, the, before the allotted <laughs> President time. President Schmidt, let, let <laughs> Councilman finish, and we'll get over to it. I appreciate it. I knew we're getting close to working together. But um, I just wanted to make those points off that I think that the public knew. But uh, you made one other comment, too, because I think it deserved a response. What do you tell those officers? I have been very clear. I know Councilman Waring. I believe Councilman Nowakowski. We've each signed a pledge that there should be absolutely no cuts to police. Matter of fact, I even went further. I said that the police department deserves a pay raise. I have no problem with doing that. And you know I've always got issues with things. But not on this case. There are 521 officers down. We have more police shootings that are occurring, more violent crimes that are occurring in the city of Phoenix. We've had a situation where officers now are having problems getting uh, out there on patrol. We're going to be realigning our districts because of the shortage of officers. There's no plan in place to add more officers. If officers, so just to be clear to the police officers that are here, I believe that you deserve more now because we are short and you're doing a lot more. But had you been at full staff, I would have believed, and you know, you find me to be very direct, if we would have been fully staffed, it would have had the amount of officers that are needed to have on our streets, I wouldn't be supporting a pay raise at this point just because of the budget deficit. So I just want to be really clear that you understand where I'm coming from. But right now, I do believe that each of you here deserve more than what you're getting. You're carrying your, a bigger load for the city of Phoenix. You're out there protecting our neighbors. And I think at some point, we have to be protecting you and covering your back as well. Thank you. All right, Mr. Uh, President Schmidt, did you wish a, res uh, a short response to uh, what the councilman indicated? Now is your time. About his signs being up early or no? The, uh, <laughs> no, I mean, uh, what we have to be cognizant of is every different uh, unit here, union, association, also has a clause in their contract that we cannot, we, can, we have to follow the law, just as what Mr. Enoch was referencing. So if we, you know, the proposal that, uh, that we put forward addresses the council's concerns while still not violating the Arizona State Constitution. Yes, it's all to have a wish list and a and dream list, but we have to, as a council, we have to be cognizant, and we, have, we still, many of you are attorneys on there, we still have an obligation because we can agree to that and then have a, mem you know, a member or a non-member sue the city and then sue us. And you guys are not going to sit there and defend us. Our two proposals that uh, we gave for the pension issues, the city has spent over 400000 Yes, you have heard it, over 400000 And that's not even counting all the internal time that the city's staff has um, on the sick leave snapshot. Our proposal was say we can come to, a, uh, to an agreement. We understand that we have to follow the Constitution. But you're paying for an outside legal uh, team in Philadelphia to defend an issue that, like Mr. Enoch just referenced, the Fields case, you know, it, it was went in the judge's favor. So again, we're, it, it's not about what you want, it's about what is best for the community, for the employees, and not violating the law. 
because all of you took that oath, I believe. I right, think very much. Uh, any other questions by members of this council before we go to uh, public testimony on this uh, important item? And then one more thing, Mayor. Thank you. Um, I, I did talk to Please many members ahead. on the council, and we did. And uh, you guys do have the the um, uh, revised proposal that was given to Ed Zerker, and you know I think it's a sound one. It's uh, this about working together, not just everybody having it their own way. We have to work together for the community's best interest. We're not sitting up here saying, hell no, we won't go. We're saying we, li we love our community, we, s we live in the community, but it takes responsibility on the, on the city council to direct the city manager to work this out. We've been, more, we've been here for 42 years and uh, we're gonna continue to be here too because we care about our community. Thank you very much. Uh, so if you please take a seat in the front row, there may be questions that come up during the testimony and council may have questions uh, during it, so, there, so your quick availability is appreciated. The other seats will be saved for uh, speakers in order. The first speaker to provide testimony will be Rudy Leva, uh, followed by uh, Richard Ray, if there's additional testimony that you wanted to provide on uh, item 25, uh, followed by uh, Frank Pacioli, uh, followed by Pat Vint. So, and I know there may be some speakers who are in another building, so I hope they're uh, being appropriately brought over to this building so they can provide uh, testimony as quickly as possible. First speaker will be Rudy Leva. Good Hello, Mayor and City Council. We're in bad times right now, once again. But you know, uh, I'm a what they call a Phoenician. I was born and raised in Phoenix. I believe in Phoenix. I work for the city of Phoenix. I work at the convention center, and uh, I don't know. There's a lot of things how we can go about about saving money. Closing libraries and community centers is not the right thing to do. And I don't know, I'm trying to help my daughter raise four grandchildren and taking money away from me, I can tell you, I don't hardly have a savings account. And uh, I work hard, I believe, in, in the city. And uh, I thought there was different ways we could save money. If you would look into all the city departments, I bet you would find a lot of departments are top heavy. And another thing, all this freezing stuff, I haven't heard nobody say uh, about freezing, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I got a brain freeze, but uh, double dipping. I think that's what we can look into to freeze. And uh, I don't know how much it will cost the city and everything, but it's a savings. And uh, I'm just speaking for all the city employees. I know you guys got a hard job. I hope you guys make the right decision. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Labor, for your testimony. The next speaker will be uh, Richard Ray. Did you feel like, did you want to testify on this one? Oh, he had to leave. Okay, so his testimony uh, on the first one, I think, applies to all of them. Uh, Frank Pacioli then will be uh, next, followed by Pat Vent, followed by Don O'Dell. Thank you, Council Mayor. Here we are again, facing a budget crisis and again asking the employees to take the brunt of the economic woes. I stood up here in October and begged you to reconsider not ending part of the food tax early because of the impact it would have on the city. You didn't listen. In fact, some of you, Mr. Waring, for instance, actually laughed at me for suggesting it. He seems to enjoy doing that for people who disagree with him. Lo and behold, we're here in the hole almost the exact amount of the food tax. When will council start to work with labor organizations in the city together to come up with solutions? It was the unions that came up with most of the revenue ideas before you. And it's the employees that once again have to take cuts to balance things. Now I know some of you, doesn't matter what the cuts are, 20, 30, 40 furloughs is never enough. You want the city to use one revenue source, the workers, to balance the budget. I'm not talking to those members of council who want to destroy the city and its workforce. I'm talking to those members who are reasonable and fair. What happened in negotiations this year was ridiculous. Flowery, optimistic outlook in January and a fiscal cliff in February. Cuts to vital employees and not a single revenue source to be found. It's amazing to me that members of city management who makes hundreds of thousands of dollars a year ask me, a dispatcher making 25 bucks an hour to solve the economic problems of this city. That's where we are? Fine, but let's at least work together. If the labor groups come to you, don't think it's always some selfish motive. If the employees come to you with ideas, don't think they want something from you. Stop laughing at us, stop demonizing us, and start working with us. You obviously can't fix the problem yourself. 
and neither can the city. Maybe it's time for a different approach. When we talk about raises for police officers, I think anyone who risks their lives to Zerna deserve such a raise. However, you conveniently leave out firefighters because you have a political issue with the CCO, and you certainly have no problem voting for a $78,000 raise for a manager. Please stop the politics. Uh, may I respond to that, Premier? I thank you very much, uh, Mr. Patoli. Uh, well, I'm going to hand over to. Uh, I'm going to hand over to the Vice Mayor first, and then uh, Councilman DeCicio, and then the, the, after uh, any other any other council members want to make a comment on it, then Pat Finn will be next. Vice Mayor, I'm voting no on all these contracts, so I'm not cutting anybody's pay. And the last time, which was referenced by Mr. Schmidt, that the contracts and everything were cut, I wasn't on the council. So. I appreciate Frank's uh, thoughts. I didn't vote for the city manager's pay raise. None of them. I think there have been three since I've been here. Didn't vote for the upper management pay raise either. So I'm being demonized here, and, and that's fine. And Frank's opinion is rather valueless to me, quite frankly. Uh, well, Frank, let, let, me ask you, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Since he talked about the laughter and everything, what would you say if your 14-year-old, for example, was, was making intemperate comments about their boss, like Mr. Zerker, on Facebook. You'd be mad. So, I don't know. When you act like that, what am I supposed to say? Can I answer a but, but, uh, uh, not done. Um, I am voting no on this contract, which is what you want. So, I guess I'm confused about why you would single me out. But that's fine. Go ahead and do it. But just so your members know, it's not the best way to, you know, win my vote. I'm going to do it anyway. But that's why I say it's, I'm going to do it in spite of what you say. So. And not Thank seeing you much, laugh, Mr. Patoli, uh, would give an opportunity to respond, please. And the only thing I brought you up on is the laughing and the, I mean, you're calling people a communist. I mean, come on. It doesn't have to get into that. It really doesn't have to do that. You laughing when I say, and, I, and if you remember what I said was, if you're going to agree to this, this is a dumb solution to cut the food tax. And you sat there and laughed. So I'm just asking for mutual respect, and you know, have respect for no one. I thank you very much, uh, Mr. Uh, I have, President Pacholi. So I'm going to have, have a you. short response to my vice here, and then right. I'll hand over to Councilman Cecio and then any other council members. I think and then we have, a lot of, we have a lot of speakers here, so we've got to get through these cards. I understand. No, I will. I'll keep this brief. I think you said we're all dumber than you thought we were. When you're if, you, people, if you didn't do that, right. When you're calling your people dumb, uh, you get what you sow. So if I was snickering at you, I was snickering at you. But it, you proved to be, it did prove to be right, though, didn't it? What's we that? are in a hole. Uh, so it, it did prove much, to be you were dumber than I thought you were. No, no, all right, we got to move on. We've got to move on. Did I use the Jedi mind trick? To, to, yeah, I don't see you talking about all of us. Right, we got to move on uh, to get additional comments. Councilman Zito, right. do you have something to say? And then uh, we got to move on to the additional cards. Uh, just a couple points, just to, uh, to be clear, Frank, just so that you know what I believe to be the real problem sure. here is the city of Phoenix, whether it's the food tax, you can talk about whatever one you want to do on revenue sources. The city of Phoenix has $46 million more this year than it did last year. This is the second highest revenue in the city of Phoenix, I believe, ever in the city of Phoenix this year. Second highest revenue. Most amount of money the city of Phoenix has ever taken in was in 2007, 2008. This is the second highest right now. So it's not a revenue problem. It's literally a structural deficit problem that the mayor and council created that created the mess for you. And you can go back to the budget that was approved back in 2012, or 2000, I'm sorry, 2013, with the projections and the 2012 MOUs. Those were all done with what I believe be phony numbers or whatever you want to call it. You can't have your projections off that much. Okay, it just doesn't work. Then you wouldn't be here today. You wouldn't be talking about it. But you can't go back, not in a negative way. I mean, you can't like, I mean, talking about the city, not you personally, just want to make sure, is that, you can't go back in time and not look at what occurred. And so if you really want to look at what created the structural deficit, you have to go back to the 2007, 2000, basically the 2008 labor agreements and the contracts back then during a really bad economic time. The city of Phoenix has done nothing. Well, we tried in 2010 to start fixing it. 2012, then it became a disaster again. Everything got bad again in 2012. So what happened was you had bad economic planning, bad, terribly bad uh, budgets, and you think you would have learned because sometimes you can give politicians a break for that, but then when you start doing it all over again in 2012, and again it goes back to the sense that if the city of Phoenix is only one of two cities in the entire valley having this kind of crisis, I think Tucson's having one too, but that tells you that there's a problem, and it tells you that there's a structural problem. Now whether we all want to agree with it or not, 
But then when you look at the fact that we have our second highest revenue year ever, and we still are doing this today. So okay, Mr. that's Mr. the problem. And Mr. CCO, I, I don't cards. disagree with you. Uh, however, I don't reward that by an $80,000 raise. You rewarded such incompetence. All right, Mr. Uh, Vint is the uh, next uh, speaker. Uh, you have about two minutes, and Don O'Dell, followed by Ms. Greta Rogers. Mr. Vint, good to see you. You know, we got a big audience here today, and I hope they all go home and tell our kids about what happened here today. We got two gentlemen on this council and mayor up here, Sal DeCicio and Jim Waring. Normally, they're outvoted seven to two, and they're the only two that speaks the facts. Believe it or not, before I decided to be a contractor in the city of Phoenix, I took a little stab at a law school. And what comes up, there's two things. There's facts, and then there's gobbledygook. Gobbledygook here is in the lead. But you're gonna have to start thinking. All of these people here, not only are they city employees, they're city citizens. So whatever happens here today, they're gonna win. If they don't get the raise, they don't have to pay it. If they get the raise, they gotta pay it. But there's only 14,000 of them, and there's 1.6 million of us citizens. And like I said before, I never took a penny in any kind of welfare in my life. There was times when I thought I might have had to, but I went to work a little harder, worked more hours, worked Saturday, Sunday, didn't get 40 days off, didn't get, uh, 104 more days by taking every Saturday and Sunday off. I didn't take uh, Christmas off. I didn't take New Year's Eve off. I didn't take Easter off. I worked. And I made a pretty good living for myself, but it wasn't easy. And it's not going to be easy for any of these people here either. I want to be on both sides. And they're going to have to start thinking and tell Thank your you kids much. what you've done here today. Thank you very much, Mr. Vent. The next speaker will be Don O'Dell, followed by Greta Rogers followed by, uh, looks like a few people have donated time to Greta. Uh, so Greta, you'll have a little extra time. Don O'Dell, please, you're next. Mayor and City Council, uh, my name is Don O'Dell. I've probably served the City of Phoenix for 12 years as a heavy equipment mechanic in Police Services Division. I'm also a proud member of the local 2384 union. I think it is irresponsible for the city to balance the budget on the backs of the employees with the city making poor decisions. Two years ago, I saved the city a million dollars and a potential of three million. Uh, the city passed up on the additional two million because the trucks were not green enough. Although they met and exceeded the emission standards for that model year. Every year I've been asked to do more with less, in spite of the substandard working conditions compared to the outside. I can't even pull a truck in uh, all the way into my work area and close the door. Uh, it, our, our building's pretty old. Uh, yet the parking lot's been redone three times in the last five years. Uh, another example would be the millions the city spent just renewing the contract for SR 85. Landfill. I had maintained the same equipment as concrete uh, for a whole lot less. Uh, the 200 employees within my division make sure every day firemen, police officers, and sanitation service services have vehicles in order to perform their duties. Now try and imagine Phoenix without these dedicated employees that keep the wheels turning. Myself and other people within my division have to supplement our incomes to provide for our families. In conclusion, I feel the city needs to explore other avenues of cost savings instead of cutting the employees' pay and benefits. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Adele, for your testimony. Greta Rogers is uh, next, followed by Dennis Marrero, I hope I pronounced that correctly, followed by Dan 
uh, Ramirez, uh, Ms. Rogers, a few folks were kind enough to donate time to you so you have a little extra time as well. I didn't understand what you said. Enunciate, please, and repeat. Okay, I'm so sorry. Uh, Ms. Greta Rogers, you, you, it's now your time to provide testimony. Some people are kind enough to provide uh, their, their time to you, so you'll have four, a little Four people from AFSCME donated time to me, plus my request. Okay, uh, excellent. If you want to use all that time, you certainly, yes. you certainly may. If I need to, I shall. If I don't, I will be courteous and leave. Please. Mayor and Council, I'm Greta Rogers. Budget proposals for 14-15 are being raised. When you're in the shorts, you don't raise your budget for next year. That's just common sense. The budget next year should not be one penny more than it is this year, and probably because you are short of expected revenue this year, let's just say 40 million, because five weeks ago it was 37.7, and it's added incrementally since then. You need to reduce whatever you're going to propose for next year and sacrifice. I spoke with Ed Zerker on Monday about the proposed reductions for city employees to take. And he explained to me that the proposal is 1.6% beginning July 1st, ending next June 30th of 15, plus a 0.9% decrease the following fiscal year, which will end on June 30th of 16. That is absolutely unconscionable. It is morally and ethically and lawfully wrong. You have not restored the 1.6% that was, that was an agreement between council and management and employees over two years ago. Do you have no regard for contractual obligation? Apparently not. Last year at this time, when we went through this, or two years ago at this time, when we went through this dog and pony show on budget, it was proposed that we should increase this year's current fiscal year budget by 7%. And for you, Sal DeCicio, to say you voted against it you exhorted and blew hard and cheer-led for 7% more. The economy is growing, it's flourishing, it's flowering. We can afford it. I was here, I heard you. You have no substantiation in fact, nor did you then, for anything you said. This council voted a 7% increase for the budget this year, and you are solely responsible for this revenue shortfall. You voted for it. You were wrong. Stand up and be men and take responsibility. I exclude Councilwomen Pastor and Gallego. They were not here. Council, through all the years, beginning with the 910 budget, has never given one copper cent of sacrifice from their salary benefit package. Not one copper cent. Management can't suggest it because you're elected, but you are not anointed. The only people I have any knowledge of who are anointed are the Pope and the Archbishop of Canterbury, the head of the Episcopal Church. You are elected and that is all. Exhibit honor and ethics and spine 
and courage and voluntarily propose to and accept a 6% reduction in your salary for the next two years. Participate in the pain. Employees and management did not cause this. What I just mentioned is the cause, in addition to prematurely reducing the food tax by one cent, one percent, which was folly. What we need to do is raise revenue. We can't do that between now and June 30th. But this needs to be done following the beginning of the next fiscal year, if not prior. Re renew the food tax, one cent, till its expiration in 15, and re put on a ballot a renewal of the two cent food tax for five more years. When this economic crisis began in September of 08, I projected we wouldn't see sunlight until 15. We're seeing a little glint, but we aren't seeing a full sunny day economically. And we won't. And we'll probably go till about 20 now, is my best guess, based upon all the business and economic narrative that I read daily, weekly, monthly, and annually. And I read one devil of a lot. So let's just get our heads on straight. And let's exercise the council and mayor leadership with courage of conviction based upon knowledge and spine to lead this city out of this morass. These people who work for you are not the reason and the cause of this. And they work for all of us. And I further asked Ed when we spoke on Monday, how many people do you think are eligible today to walk out, if this goes through, who are retirement eligible? And he said he didn't know, but he guessed it was in the thousands. This is what's going to happen. You pass this egregious, wrong, morally and ethically and lawfully wrong reduction on the backs of the people who make this city run, who are the spine and the nervous system of this city, and you're going to have a house of cards and you will not be able to govern. Thank you. Okay, so uh, thank you very much, Ms. Rogers. The next speaker will be Dennis Marrero, followed by Dan Ramirez, followed by Ryan McClure. Good to see you. Mayor, <clears throat> councilmen, women. All right, my name's Dennis Marrero. See, I guess I'm one of the uneducated Unit 2 workers you talk so highly about. Just one of many who keeps the city running. But right now, I want you to know a few things about myself and the training I've had. 20 years military, 16 years with the city of Phoenix. I have thousands of hours in technical training and hundreds of hours in managerial training. <clears throat> I've been to five different countries, including Spain, Turkey, Korea, Germany, and Italy. So I consider that the school of the hard knocks. Um, this, this budget, uh, we don't deserve the pay cuts. We already been working hard with less, and now in June, supposedly there's supposed to be a, a mass exit of people. I know in my section alone there is getting out, and I guess you're gonna ask us even work harder, keep our heads up, but it's pretty hard to do when you're cutting our pays and our benefits. City manager put out an email asking for suggestions 
And uh, some of the suggestions I put in were, I worked on a crane the other day. Uh, since 2012, that crane has 54 hours on it. A lot of the cranes within the city of Phoenix have low usage hours. I made a suggestion of pulling them together with operators paired with their cranes. This way it would save money uh, going outsourced for other departments that need cranes. Also, uh, in the M5 computer system you guys approved, trucks are flagged for disposal like a year out. So that's supposed to mean to us we don't order unnecessary uh, parts. But this goes on and on. The trucks get older and older and require a lot more maintenance. Sometimes we put thousands of uh, dollars in a vehicle and a month later it goes to salvage. I just rehosed an aerial truck. It was $11,000 and guess where it's going? We've got to have for, foresee this. You know? um, city manager also said you know, he's going to take the same cuts we are. Well, I would take a 10% cut, you give me that kind of pay raise. <laughs> so, I just hope you guys take a look at us, Mr. DeCicio. Holy cow, <laughs> please. You think we're getting everything, but we're not. Yeah, no. I mean, I don't know, you know where all these figures are coming from. The days off, a lot of people are working garbage, getting those trucks up. They can't take a holiday off. They ask for volunteers, a lot of times they don't get them. Mr. Mayor, can you finish, finish up your testimony? We're over the two-minute mark. Can you finish up your testimony? What's that? Could you finish up your testimony? We're over the two-minute mark. We're trying to get to, we have many other speakers as well. Okay. Thank you. Uh, well, no, please finish up. Uh, that's about all I got to say. All right, thank you very much. Thank you for taking time to uh, uh, come down. Uh, Councilor, did you have a just, short response yeah, just a, to that, please? Yeah, well, it could be short or long, Mayor. Um, it could be whatever. It's a public hearing. I think that they have a right to speak, so do I. But um, the, the days off, just so that you know, it's a public report. Um, you can ask staff for it, or my office can provide, can provide it for you. Uh, it, it's going to be on each of the, um, the labor agreements so that we can see what days off are allowed. And with Lyuna, sorry to single you out, but it's the only report that I got so far. But it shows with the, um, the agreement that occurred with uh, these release times or release days, it bumps it up to 41 days for uh, an employee from zero to five years. They get 41 days off a year, uh, which you know can be carried over. And then for employees that are over 21 years of service, uh, the total amount's around 49 to 50 days off. So that's where it is. It's in, the, it's in a public report. And it also talks about compensation, shows that compensation um, from the last labor agreement to this labor agreement with these you know, supposed cuts, you can call them cuts, call them whatever you want, has actually gone up. So that's what is occurring. And I just think that there's so much of this phony baloney stuff that goes on at these things, but all you need is to look at some of these things and you'll, you'll get it too. The problem is it's not your fault. It's literally the way be, it's being presented to you and other members of the public. All right, uh, uh, Vice Mayor, do you have a short comment? Yeah, I had a short comment. Uh, is Frank still here? He is. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, you said something about name calling. So, so on December 18th, 2013, Frank Piccoli commented on a link. How nice to have a city council with members willing to work with the union to achieve goals instead of Phoenix with a beep named DeCicio, and you did not beep it out, who doesn't want reform but destruction. Did you write this? Because you're talking about name calling. So I'm just curious, is this you? Here, I'll pass it to you and we'll see. All right, so let's move on. To please don't call me a communist for looking at it, but can I see it, please? Uh, right, why don't you pass it to him? Mr. Patroli, take, take a chance to look at it, and then, but then we'll come back later on and have a chance okay. to respond. Well, thank you. We got, we have all I'm really pointing out, Mayor, is if I'm you glad your staff is doing such good research, Mr. Waring. Right, we have many speakers to get to. At, don't act like a 15 year old. Okay, Mr. And Patrol, don't lecture me about President Patrol, we'll have a, please review it. Please review it, and then I'll have a chance to respond in a minute. Dan Ramirez is next, then Ryan. Let me know when I can come. I'll give you a chance to respond. It's really fair. Well, Mayor, you should be able to. Mayor, Councilman Waring, or Vice Mayor Waring, has a right to defend. The, the, the thought here. He has a right to bring it up. And we're, nobody's in a hurry today. I'm not, and I don't think anybody Thank else much, has uh, got Councilman. some important things going um, on Cal here. Obviously, the Vice Mayor can uh, make whatever points he wants to make. I just want to be fair to any person that uh, has a chance to, to appropriately respond. Mr. Ramirez, uh, you are next, and then followed by uh, Ryan McClure, followed by Michael Lagunas. Good to see you. Thank you for being here. 
Good afternoon, Mayor, City Council. My name is Dan Ramirez. I'm the Vice President for AFSCME 2384. I'm also a 27-year city employee, native of this great city of Phoenix, born and raised here. Love the city, love the community. I'm here today to express my disgust in the proposal that was brought to us to the table. Bottom line, there is no more fat to cut. You are literally chipping away into the bone at this point. Through the many community meetings, suggestions have been brought to your attention. Revenue generating ideas. Everything from reinstating the food tax, a bag tax, and even an entertainment fee. We need to sustain our budget on a reoccurring basis. The time is over to balance a budget on the backs of all these employees. These employees are the workforce of this great community. Without these employees, City of Phoenix would not be the great city it is today. So I ask you to reconsider your proposal. A counterproposal has been made. The counterproposal meets and exceeds the numbers that were asked of us. So again, I ask you to reconsider. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Ramirez. Just for, just for uh, purposes, uh, this is both management and uh, representative of uh, the employee organization have a chance to present. This is a chance just to comment on either of those proposals. Uh, we're not voting here today on, on, uh, on an MNOU um, or an imposition of a contract. Dan Ramirez? I'm sorry, I apologize. Ryan McClure is next, followed by Michael Lagunas, followed by Reverend Maupin. Council, thank you for letting me speak today. You know, it's pretty sad how bad the employees are being torn apart these days. Uh, we are asked to do more and more with less. And uh, when you hear at work multiple people talking about on a daily basis looking for another job, that is sad to hear. We should be proud to work here and not being torn apart by the lack of uh, balancing a budget. I mean, like you keep saying, we've made more money why is it the employee's responsibility to continue to balance the budget? When I short, fall short on my checking account, who's going to come back me up? Because uh, I can't tear apart employees. You know, you need to hold yourselves responsible for why this budget crisis we're in today. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. McClure, for taking the time to be here. Uh, Mr. Lagunas, followed by Reverend Maupin, followed by Dee Dee Barker. Hi, my name is Mike Lagunas. I'm a city employee, electrician for the traffic signals for 25 years. Uh, I felt I was in high school, man, all this name calling and crap. That's pretty cool for a real serious uh, event going on here. Uh, anyways, uh, we're talking budget cuts, and, and I know that some people have certain budgets that if they don't use them, they lose them and stuff, and if you remember last time, I was the guy with the shower curtains. <laughs> uh, anyways, that's a different story. But uh, I offered, I asked you guys if any of you guys wanted to come down to see our facilities, and none of you took me up on my offer, which is cool. Uh, anyways, uh, we offered a proposal to you guys that exceeded this, the, the money you guys were asking us to take, and, and I don't understand why we were, we we're given furlough days, which I don't understand furlough days, but you guys were picking which days we need to take off, which I don't understand is because there's other departments that have furlough days, and they can pick and choose what days they need to take off because it's allowed. But, you know, ours were certain holidays and, and stuff, which didn't understand. But... Uh, we're not being treated as equals. You know, you guys are saying we got to balance the budget and we have budget cuts and all that stuff. You know, and uh, you know, some of us on the council were, were, uh, were in council when all these uh, budgets, uh, MOUs and stuff were, contracts were being voted on and some of you voted yes that are now against them and saying that it was the prior people that voted it in and 
some of them are still here that voted against them or for them. Uh, I know the food tax is a big no-no because it's political suicide. You know, I know a lot of you guys want to get reelected for your seats, and if you raise the food taxes, that will get you not elected. But, you know, you're asking us to take cuts here, you know, but I don't understand why. If a food cut helped bring us down from 47 million or 477 million to 35 million with the food tax in place, why couldn't we just put it back for another? 10 minutes. I mean, if it generates that much money in that short of time to balance our budgets, I can't see why we couldn't increase our uh, or reinstate the food tax. Uh, I really don't have a whole lot to say other than I hope you guys vote correctly. Thanks. Thank you very much uh, for taking the time to come down. Uh, the next speaker will be Reverend Gerbert Maupin, followed by uh, Dee Dee Barker, followed by Richard uh, Santos. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I think there were uh, a couple of folks uh, from asked me that uh, gave me a little time. Uh, so uh, but before I begin, uh, to uh, my fellow uh, Phoenician Greta, you had an interesting list you know, you, of anointed people, clergy. You had the Pope and the Archbishop of Canterbury, but you missed a very important uh, demographic to add to that list, and that is Negro Baptist preachers. Uh, I've never come across a Negro Baptist preacher, including myself, that didn't feel we were highly anointed. So please add us to your list. Uh, I'd like to begin uh, with that in mind. Um, I do come to talk politics. There was a vote the other night, and 96% of the employees that are organized who asked me rejected the city's offer. 96%. That's an overwhelming majority of people that aren't satisfied with what the city has put on the table. That's serious. It may not mean anything to some members of the council, but I can think of at least five of you that that should mean a whole lot to. There are at least five of you, Councilwoman Pastor, Mr. Mayor, Councilman Valenzuela, Councilwoman Gallego, and Councilman Nowakowski, on the phone uh, that profess to be allies of the working man and working woman. And I don't say this from a place where I can't relate to you, right? Politicians, we, we seek to be in line with our base. We make appeals to labor all the time. Support us in our candidacy. Walk the streets for us. You know, solidarity, progressive values, all of those things that we talked about, but now it's time to put it into practice. You have to go back to the table, and we have to figure out what a compromise can be between this council uh, and between the 96% of the backbone of the city's employees, ASME workers, that don't agree with this contract. You know, we saw worse times in this city, $277 million budget deficit. We asked for 3% some odd uh, cut reduction in pay. Even if you use the ratio of that time and apply it to now, you're asking more of them now than you did when we had a major budget crisis. Uh, and uh, the stakes are simply not that high. I heard Councilman DeCicio talk about the city of Glendale. I happen to be a, an expert on the city of Glendale. Uh, and uh, they, they are in a terrible situation. But in Phoenix, you're not using enterprise funds to pay off an NHL, uh, the NHL, uh, or, or, or a sports franchise. We're not, we're not a, a six months away from bankruptcy. Our credit rating hasn't, hasn't dropped as far as there has. We're comparing apples and oranges. The city of Phoenix is very healthy. We made money, we didn't lose money. So now we have to factor in what we can do that will be equitable for the employees that are here. And that's, that's not too much to ask if there's an, an attitude within the administration. I'm talking to five politicians. If there's an attitude within the administration, find people within this city that have the same relationship or respect that you all have for labor to be third parties in these negotiations so that the workers can have someone who can advocate for fairness. There is no MOU on the table for ASME, but there is an MOU between the five of you and the members of ASME that are here. And that's an MOU that, is, that isn't negotiated every two years. 
That's the MOU that's made when you go to them as politicians and as progressive leaders, as members of the Democratic Party that say you espouse the values of labor and the worth and dignity of every worker. You made that promise. And it's important that you keep that promise, the five of you. The five of you have the power to do the right thing. The five of you have the power to value these workers. The five of you have the power to get back to the negotiating table. The five of you have the power to authorize uh, unofficial uh, folks to help in the talks. The five of you have the power to ratify a contract that's in line with the values of these workers. The workers aren't going to break Phoenix as Phoenix is broken. That's because of the terrible decisions that have been made in the past. I always think of my home city as a donut. And if you look at the ceiling, you know, imagine the outer ring of the ceiling is being red hot with taxes. And then you look at the core and it's an icy blue because of all of the valuable tax cuts and incentives that we've given to every major commercial, retail, and sporting development in this city. And all that I'm asking is if you'll bend over backwards for special interests, bend over backwards for the interests of ASME because they represent the most special interests of all. They're human beings made in the image of God and they have a right to not only the wages that we're negotiating, but hopefully one day a living wage. We talk about the greatness of Phoenix. We're nowhere near there yet in terms of a living wage for these employees. That's not even what we're negotiating. This is about ends meet, making ends meet. This is about getting by. So the five of you can do the right thing to hell with the others, but the five of you can do the right thing. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Reverend.